your village board meeting of June 25th, 2024. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for the victims of the extreme heat and severe flooding across the United States this past week. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may have a seat. Okay, let me begin, as I always do, by introducing your Village Board of Trustees, starting at the far end with Trustee James Fryban. Next to him is Trustee Matt Fabro. Next to him is Trustee Susan Suriello. Next to her is Deputy Mayor Vic Ferrelli. Next to him is Village Clerk Jessica McLennan. And I am your mayor, Andrew Giacomazza. Joining us at the adult table tonight uh, are his attorney, Kelly Norton, Village Confidential Advisor, or Consigliere, Tara Burek, uh, Rob Wyan, our Highway Superintendent, and our newly minted Building Inspector, Head Building Inspector, John Hand III. So, jumping right in, uh, for our closed public hearing, Introductory Local Law 3 of 2024, amending the zoning map of the Village of Woodbury. Public hearing was held on Introductory Local Law 3 of 2024, amending the zoning map. Public hearing was closed on June 13th with written comments accepted until the close of business yesterday, June 24th. Three letters were submitted from Millicent Trelaw, Catherine and Steve Bodo, and Nina Watkins expressing concerns and opposition regarding the proposed development. So, I will start with the board. Does the board have any questions for the applicant at this moment? I mean, actually, this is it. This is your last chance to ask any questions you may have. Speak now or forever hold your peace. James? would address the additional letters that were received. If that's a no. We did, uh, George Lithgow, j and Law, on behalf of the applicant, uh, we did submit a letter today. We received comments uh, over the last week. Two of the letters, or I think three of the letters, came in uh, yesterday. We did have a chance to review them. I don't mean to dismiss them, but they are largely uh, comments that we have addressed before in our response. They deal with the issues that were dis okay. You need a taller mic. Uh, they largely address the issues that were discussed at two public hearings that have been held. There are certainly concerns about flooding or concerns about uh, storm order management or our concerns about traffic. Those are, again, largely, not largely, those are existing conditions uh, that do exist and will exist whether or not the project goes forward. The impacts that the project creates in terms of those issues has been addressed in the response that we made before. Um, I think many of those issues that were presented in the written comments either follow from that or there are issues that really should be and will be addressed as part of the site plan review because what we're, what we're doing now is only the first step in the process. We will actually, if you uh, proceed with the rezoning, we will have to go before the planning board. We will go with a full site plan. We will go with all the bells and whistles. There will be a comprehensive review by the planning board, its consultants, as well as the county planning department. And then, um, I'm sure there will be a public hearing. There has to be for site plan special permits. So with that opportunity, I think we've certainly had a prelude here. We know what the issues are. We, I believe, will be prepared to address them. The plans will be uh, responsive to the concerns that were identified. And I think it will be a constructive engagement. Uh, we will try to reach out to the property owners, especially along Spring Lake Road. 
Uh, it may be something that uh, the village can help facilitate to explain some of the details of this process because I've been in it for five years. Uh, no, eight years. I've been in it for a long time. I know a lot of these things. I know the details. Uh, I know when you walk into a public hearing for the first time and there's a presentation of a plan, a map, there's a lot of speculation that takes place as to what it might be and how it might impact them. And I think an opportunity to go through the details with them may be helpful to them and indirectly, obviously, to us. So uh, we will certainly work forward on that if we are proceeding forward. There's no point in having a public hearing just to have the same issues discussed again. It's uh, like uh, Cy Sims used to inform customer is your best, uh, inform client is your best customer, and that's pretty true for neighboring property owners. The more information we can give them, I think the uh, simpler the process will be for all concerned. So the letter addresses two of the issues that were raised by the board at the uh, last meeting, one being conservation easement. Um, we are prepared to do that. One being a developer's agreement. We are prepared to do that as well, primarily to address emergency services. But there was a concern about uh, working forward when this project actually does get to the point where construction takes place to look again at the uh, question of a turn lane and a traffic single. And we're committed to taking that look. Uh, the information we have so far indicates there's minimal impact, if at all, on the existing condition that exists there. But we can help, hopefully, uh, straighten things out with DOT, understand what the issues are, and what the opportunities are to fix it. Uh, and I just wanted to put, I took three paragraphs, because the planning board took a lot of heat in the comments. But I think that was because people don't appreciate the process that goes forward, that goes through, that a project goes through as it's being reviewed. One of the concerns was, is there going to be an independent review? And you do have, both on the planning board and the village, uh, the village board side, you do have independent consultants who look at this from your perspective, advise you on your action and on the, what the uh, law requires. And I think that may be something that, uh, if you're not familiar with the process, you're not uh, fully appreciative of. And even though it took a long time, we are appreciative of the process we went through because it did ask the questions. It made us think about it. We came back with a better project. And I think it works in favor of everyone. So uh, if there are any questions about the letter, I'd be happy to answer them. But otherwise, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. OK. So just so everybody knows, I think we've answered the age-old question, how lawyers get paid. It's based on the amount of words that they say per speech. I thought you'd be up there for three minutes, tops. Anyway, I'm kidding. It George. seemed like a moment. Uh, it seemed like a moment. <laughs> Okay, does the board have any questions for the applicants? What is the fate of 218-2-9 that's owned, but it has currently has a home on it? Is that home is coming that the one next, That's the one next to uh, Spring Lake Road? It's on 32. It's 594 Route 32. Where is it in relation to the uh, mortgage broker? Further to north? The, there is, yes, there is one north. building that will come down. It's, uh, I drove past it on the way in. I it is a picture of it, but I, I mean, I have the address and the tax ID, but I'm just wondering, like there's a house sitting there that the property is owned by. One of the applicants. LLC entities. Highland Mill Center Group. Yes. So I'm just curious. If it's included with the application, I believe that the house will come down. The house will come down. I, if I recall correctly, it's not. And as far as know. the developer's agreement, at what point is that done? Is that on the, at the planning board side or by the village board itself? It would, be by, it would be by the village board, but it would be, if when it goes before the planning board, it would certainly be a condition of the planning board's resolution, depending on different so it representations. It would be done at a later date. Okay. But it would be based upon the representations that the applicant's um, been making. Okay, any other questions for the applicant before I let him sit back down? Um, oh, hello, is this working? Yeah, okay. 
Okay. Um, I had, I guess, I wanted clarification regarding the open space that's going to happen with the rezoning if it goes through. Um, aside from obviously where they're going to build two buildings, the rest of the plot, aside from what's getting joined in with the trailer park, would be forever open space, untouched. The trees that are there would remain there. Yes. Because I think there was some... Unless they die a natural death. I think there was some confusion in some of the letters. I think somebody questioned if landscaping would be put in, and that would qualify yeah. as open space, and I just wanted that to be clear for the there, public. There was an issue raised regarding landscaping, the potential it could impact uh, water quality. Hmm. Um, what I would propose as part of the planning board process is to follow a procedure called integrated pest management. It has been used widely, and it, it basically is designed to minimize the use of uh, sort of like the organic food equivalent of landscaping, where you try to uh, understand what the vegetation is, what the risks are, and manage it without applying something that you have to wear gloves and a mask for. And sorry, do you want to go, Vic, or are you good? I just want to follow up on that real quick. So the conservation easement with this land would be signed. I'm assuming during the planning board process as well, Kelly, when we're doing any developer agreements or anything like that? So we would discuss it in the developer's agreement, but the applicant has made a representation in the letter um, at the meet at the prior meeting as well as in the letter to you. So if that's the case, then the planning board would uh, include that in their resolution of approval, that that would be preserved. That would have to come back to this board for the approval of the terms of that con uh, conservation easement. Right. So that would be in the future. Okay, thank you. And I just want to clear something up, just to make sure that we're on the same page. Um, we're talking about open space, but I want to make sure that that open space is what we talked about the last meeting, forever green space. Yes. It's not going to change. It's not going to be built on till the end of time, once, right. once you're done with this project. And, and that act, I didn't realize this, but your code actually calls as a definition of open space and then parens green space, which is what I think Trustee Cirillo was referring to. But the greens, it basically says that. And the uh, conservation easement will button it down and nail it down and strap okay. it down and duct tape it. All right, good. If you I got just anything wanted... else, we'll use that too. Right, I just want to make sure that there's, everybody knows there's not. A... Yeah, and I, I just want to, you know, it, the developer is willing to do this. But one of the reasons that uh, help the developer do that is the way this process works with the uh, senior housing, the only thing you can do on the rezone property is senior housing. And you can only do as much as you have density for. Right. So moving all of the density over to the area near uh, the mortgage building, it frees up all that land and it can't be used for anything else. So even if we didn't have a conservation easement, it would be what it is. And then lastly, um, after looking at everything again this past week, I would still like to see, I mean, I don't know how it would work and what it's zoned for, but some kind of an urgent care or some kind of medical facility or place where people can go just for the common cold to be in that area. It, we, I know we talked about it a little bit last, at the yes, last meeting. Yes, it, it was discussed. Uh, the, the client is certainly willing to accommodate that. Uh, if okay. we find someone, we'll certainly work and it will go through the planning process and it will. Right, that's a planning board thing, I know. Yes, it's, yes. Okay. Go ahead. One little follow up. Uh, Mr. Lithgow, uh, based on my experience, I wanted to make sure that you carry forward the issue of this conservation easement. It is in perpetuity, is that correct? Yes. And it's also, it's enforceable by the village. That's something that has to be discussed. Um, sometimes conservation easements require, conservation easements come in different flavors. There is one form of conservation easement that requires a qualified conservation organization to enforce it. That's when you're seeking a tax exemption. Mm -hmm. And that is not what we're envisioning here. We are not looking for a subsidy. We are just looking to um, accommodate the board's request that it be forever green. So probably the village would be the most likely enforcement entity. Well, in this that I typically recommend would have the village able to enforce it. But in this instance, um, 
from my experience, I would suggest that the conservation easement allow, allow enforcement by neighboring properties as well. Because if this gets out of control and they come to the village and it doesn't happen, the neighbors should have a right <coughs> to engage in that. We'll talk with your council about how to address that request. I don't, can't make a commitment. It's, you know, if you've ever encountered a neighbor who is somewhat unreasonable about your use of your property, uh, it, you know, these things can go sideways. But I understand you want to be sure it can be enforced by someone. Um, so following up with Vic's point about the urgent care center, I mean, I know our closest hospitals are either in KJ, Garnet Health, or St. Luke's in Cornwall, which their their emergency, uh, you know, section closed. So um, I think the developer's agreement with the EMS is a good way to bridge some of those concerns that we're having with whether folks can be taken care of if there's medical emergencies. And um, could you also kind of give the public and yeah, is, is this not working? No, it wasn't close enough. Okay. Yep. This one's dead. Sorry. So um, I'll recap. Sorry. So this this EMS developers agreement I feel is a good. Um, it's a good bridge because there aren't many hospitals nearby, as we're all saying, um, to possibly maybe help with some of the medical concerns that might happen in the future. Hopefully not, you know, fingers crossed. But um, could you clarify for the public on water and sewer? It's my understanding from reading everything and talking with, you know, yourself in email um, that we won't be having any construction happen until the water situation is resolved and Orange County approves the water. And then the sewage situation with the Hollett pump station is resolved under the EPA consent order. That's correct. I have nothing to add. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And I just want to follow up on the forever green open space. I know there's a couple of different types. I just want to make sure that the one that we end up going with is the one that'll be forever green and can't be changed by a future developer or a future board. It'll be, like I said earlier, to the end of time, it'll be green. Your attorney will take care of that. Okay. Thanks, Kel. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Before I tell George he could sit and we can continue business. Um, Any other questions? Going once, going twice. One more. Sorry, George. There you go. <laughs> okay. Last one, I promise. Um, I kept the grip on a, this for a reason. We had a question from the public about whether this would be anything involving Section 8, anything like that with no. the housing. If the type of housing, I think there was worries on the part of the public that the type of housing in this development could change after the fact, that they're worried that maybe parts of the agreement may not hold up in the future. I'm... <laughs> If, if the housing changes from what was approved, uh, it, certainly if it changes to the extent it's no longer age-restricted housing and the preferences that are required are not afforded, it would be in violation of the zoning. So the, uh, you know, the, the process, the, we can appeal uh, if it proved necessary, but there is no reason to do that. It just... Okay, and one final thing for the public. I came across in the senior housing, we're allowed to create a rental guidance board, I believe. We can appoint three to five people to a board. Yep. Um, right at the end. Yeah. I don't know if that's something we'd all be interested in looking at in the future. This is the pass. Just a thought. Thank you. Okay. My work here is done. Thank okay, you. we'll try this again. Any other questions from the board? Going once, going twice. Final opportunity. All right, thank you, George. Thank you. The lift gown. Okay, what is the board's pleasure? Not all at once. I will offer a resolution to approve the rezoning of the, as stated in the application and subject to the conditions and statements of the applicant as to the future pr procedures before the planning board. 
All right, do I have a second? Okay, so that's but, in favor of approving local law, introductory local law number three of 2024 as amended um, and presented back to the board by the planning board. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll second that. All right, I have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call. Trustee Fryban, any votes? Aye. Trustee Fabro? Aye. Aye. Mayor Aye. And that's it. Okay. Moving along, public comment on agenda items only. So the agenda is in the back. We're actually on the side there on that table that has no business being called a table. So uh, anything that is currently on the agenda tonight, it is a very light agenda. So going once. Good night. Going twice. And we got Jimmy. Jimmying Highland Mills. So I want to speak to about a couple of things on the minutes. Okay. Okay. So first off is I would like to oppose, I would like to voice my opposition to the village board naming Chris Gerber as the chairperson for the Woodbury Planning Board. The reason for this is that he does not use a number two pencil when he's <laughs> taking notes during these planning board meetings. If there's no such rule, I'm making it up right now. <laughs> um, you know, why can't I have that same right if an elected official can make up stuff? <laughs> if you're gonna tell me I am wrong, I'm also not gonna apologize why should I have to apologize when I'm proven wrong when an elected official does not have to? You know, for me, at least, I believe the elected official should be held to a higher standard. So enough goofing around. I am curious that when I read the minutes that we all know a mistake was made or an asinine allegation was made by about Chris Gerber. But I also saw this that during your reorganization meeting that for consultants of the village, it was four to one for approving, you know, H2M, a couple of areas, Kelly. Kelly. So now my question is, Kelly, do you have a law degree? Is that the reason why you <laughs> voted nay you for to. this? Is there a reason? Because I see Chris Gerver, you know, your allegations or your claims, why was, did you vote against the consultants for the village? Was there a reason for this? Everyone else voted for it. I mean, is there something that we should know? This is a comment period, not a question and answer you don't period. Have no, this to, you don't have to answer him, James. Trustee Fryman, okay. that's, your, that's your call. Okay, no, no, not a problem. I was, just, I was just curious where there was a nay. Um, that's it for now. Thank you, James. No problem. And I will look into that number two pencil law. That was awesome. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak on anything that is on the agenda for this evening? Going once, going twice, and we're moving along to administrative business. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from our June 13th, 2024 meeting as presented? Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of ab abstract. Village Clerk McLennan, will you please read abstract two? Abstract two contains vouchers 2425-0046 through 2425-0134 and total $645,211.58. Okay, can I have a motion and a second to approve abstract two as read? So moved. I got second. a motion and a second. A uh, motion by Trustee Fryband, seconded by Trustee Forelli. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So we have to amend Fire Department Equipment Request 9 of 2024. So at our last meeting, we only approved an allocation of $16,287.60. 
the total was supposed to be $170,000. What we are doing is, as per the budget, we are purchasing two vehicles for our Woodbury Fire Department Chiefs. They were part of the budget. Once again, $16,287.60 was already approved. Tonight, we are amending and approving uh, FDER number nine of 2024 for $153,712.40. So can I have a motion in a second to approve amended Fire Department Equipment Request nine of 2024? Motion. Discussion? What? Discussion. Sure. During the budget hearing, I had opposed the purchase of capital equipment as an operating expense, which is what this particular amendment does. Again, I believe this, where you have capital equipment, in this case rolling stock, in this case also totaling over $3 million for the year, this should be bonded. And I said that at the budget, and I'll say it again tonight. This is not a proper use of village operating revenues for acquiring capital equipment. Well, that would be your opinion, Trustee Fryban. I will take it under advisement. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. There you go. OK, moving along. Can I have a motion and a second to approve Fire Department Equipment Request 10 of 2024 to purchase and replace four outdated non-working apparatus modems in the amount of $3,782.40? I'll move that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, there is no old business. Now we get to authorize me to sign a bunch of stuff. My favorite part of the meeting. So, can I have a motion and a second to authorize me, the mayor, to sign the dental policy renewal for, with CDPHP for the fiscal year 2024-2025? Motion. A motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Once again, you're going to authorize me, the mayor, to sign proposal for pre preventive maintenance of the bay doors from Duchess overhead doors. These are for the doors for the fire department bay downstairs of 840 bucks. So moved. So I have a second, second it. Trustee Fabro? Oh, it was Trustee Ferrelli. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, advertise letters of interest. So can I have a motion and a second to authorize Jessica, the village clerk, to advertise for letters of interest for the ethics committee. Now, the one thing I need to figure out is when we want these letters due back from, and it should probably be before the next meeting, which will be at July 11th, and we can move this along. So one second. Just a question, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, based on item D under new business, is will that affect what date the letter will be submitted by. Say that again? Uh, item D is discussing one meeting a month for July and August. Uh, that would change potentially the date well, of meeting. Well, regular, a regular scheduled meeting is for July 11th regardless. So I can have these due by someday in that week and then the July 11th meeting we could schedule, schedule a date for interviews. So the July 11th would be a regular scheduled meeting, so we'll just keep it that way. So and move. We have a public hearing already scheduled for that day. Yeah, so, so move. Why don't we make it for um, Monday, July 8th? Okay. So we'll make it for Monday, July 8th. So can I motion in a second to authorize Jessica, the village clerk, to advertise for letters of interest for the ethics committee? Let letters of interest will be accepted until. April, uh, 4 p.m. on April, April, whoo, July 8th. <laughs> Motion. Motion, no, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving on. Discussion and vote, one meeting a month, July and August. So can I have a motion and a second to have the July meeting kept on July 11th, okay? <laughs> uh, because we do have a public hearing scheduled for that day. And the August meeting 
to be kept to August 8th, which motion. would also be a regular scheduled meeting. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Can I bring this up? Sure. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That ends regular business. So, we go on to public comment. So, this is your moment to speak about anything. And I don't even care what. Sean Murphy, President, Woodbury Fire Department. Just like to thank uh, all the village board here for approving our uh, increase in the allocation of funds, very important for the fire department. Don't need to remind you, but perhaps the people in TV land that we are 100% volunteer. Um, it's very important and to be quite honest, a huge uh, savings to the taxpayers in town. Hope that you can keep business strong in this town and uh, we're very glad to serve the town of Woodbury. And I speak for the whole fire department as the president when I say that. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. And thank you for your service. Anyone else in the public w wishing to speak? Speak now or forever hold your peace. I'm going to sign some stuff for you. Maria Hunter, Woodbury. I'm going to ask something of our treasurer and the village clerk. She's not here tonight, but well, maybe is. at our next meeting. Could you give us a breakdown of what it would cost to have bonded these two vehicles versus outright buying them? I think maybe if we had a comparison and let the residents know how much more money it would have cost us by bonding with interest, I think maybe that would be an educational piece for all and of us. That was my argument when we were talking about bonding I, for something as, I, as minute as $170,000 because interest rates are so high right now. Thank you. And by the time you get done paying this, over whatever terms you yep. would do, it's gonna cost you X amount more. But maybe this would be a learning oh, exercise yeah, yeah. that we can express to the residents. So I'm asking whenever the village clerk and uh, the treasurer can put something like this together, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Anyone else in the public wishing to speak? Jimmy Ng, Highland Mills, again, Rob, thank you so much. I love living in a small village, small town, whatever you want to call it. When the people that care about this area, they're there when you need help. They're always out to let, let you know, that helping hand. Several times in the Brigadoon, and this time, you know, you had that freak little quick storm on Sunday, something knocked down, and, and the responses were, were incredible. And that's what we're about. Um, more and more, it seems like we're losing that. I know you guys had a tough decision about approving senior housing. Sue, you brought up a great point. You rather know what you're getting than what you don't. And it is the lesser evil, and I, I agree with you. But at the end of the day, a development is a development. I speak to so many residents that live here, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. And every development that they, you put up, it changes because they're knocking down trees. So it changes how the water runs, how the wind blows, and it just changes how things go. And with all these studies, with all these studies done, you can't predict what happened. There's always the storm that you just don't know about. What is what can town village do? Is is there such a way to set up a fund to help these homeowners in that manner? Because we what last time I can't even remember the name of the storm that you had Highland Falls and they had all these applications denied by FEMA. Most people weren't covered. I mean, how many homeowners here have flood, flood insurance? You think 
Me, I, I'm, I'm way up top. I'm not thinking about flood insurance. But what, it, what can be done to help these homeowners in the event that these projects create a problem? Steve Gargano, is Steve here? Nope. He nope. should have been some type of assistance. The developer wasn't gonna help him. If his insurance didn't cover him, he, he, was, at, he, was, he was out of luck. What can be done that, I mean, can you tax the development? Can some other way of raising a trust fund that a review board looks into it and a tiny little bit to help? You know what? You run into a problem, insurance doesn't cover it. You need something to rebuild, something. Is that a possibility of anything, or is this just no? I mean, because it's, it's, it's all these developments, it's, it's on and on. You can't guarantee me these 100 year flood, whatever it is. The water, you know what, the traffic is, is a selfish reason. We don't want to block 32 and everything else. But you can't tell me that the homes in that area aren't going to be affected. They, they, they are clearing a large area, maybe a smaller area than if we did, you know, you didn't approve senior housing. But at the end of the day, it's just a large paved open area and we all know what happens. 32, when these storms run through, it's, it's, it's a disaster. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know what, Rob, your crew can only handle so much. But you know what's going to happen. More runoff, more things coming over. I'm going to call you every day. Rob, something blew over. I, I need your help. I mean, and that's, that's the issue. The whole idea is that, you know, I, I follow everything. You know, I, I follow what's going on in, in Clovewood, South Blooming Grove. And everyone's reacting to the issues that arise. I don't know, is it possible? Or it doesn't even make sense. But try to attack it before it happens. The assistance side. Because the developer's gonna tell you everything. Well, we studied this, we studied traffic, we studied the weather, we studied everything. It's not gonna happen under our watch. Well, you know, too bad, we've seen enough that it's happened under your watch. It always has. I just care about the homeowners. Okay, the, the, the people that buy their homes, that investment, their largest investment, that they're going to chances are that they're making their whole lifetime. And to lose it like that is unfair. It really is unfair. You know, I, I understand that we can't keep the whole area a forest and undeveloped. And I, I understand that. I, I understand new residents are coming in. But is there anything that the town or village could set up to help these homeowners on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Thank you. Thank you, James. Anyone else? I see John Keller walking to the podium. He's taking his time. <coughs> He's thinking things over. He's going to use the bathroom. No. He's <laughs> heading straight to the podium. I'll introduce you for it. John Keller, Highland Mills. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There you go. Sorry I missed the last meeting, but I'll be sure to clear all my vacation schedule with <laughs> you before my wife from now on. It was a topic of conversation during the fireman, the fire di uh, dinner and installation. That was a good meeting, too. Yeah. It was a good dinner. Yeah. Yep. Which brings me to a question, and then I want to just say I did watch the meeting in its entirety online. And I hate to say it, I was appalled. I was disgusted. When a resident of this village who is well-liked, well-respected, has to defend herself and her husband because of the actions of one of the trustees here, I'm appalled. And then she will not get an apology, Tara, on behalf of myself as a resident, to you and your husband, I'm sorry, because you will not get an apology from a certain re uh, trustee of this board. And you earned it. 
and you earn the respect that you and your husband both get. That brings me to my next point. We talk about ethics. It's the topic of conversation lately. Talking about an ethics committee. And I believe, Mr. Mayor, you said you would be the first one up when the ethics committee came. Well, there's going to be an ethics committee. The first thing we need to do is understand what ethics is. Do we all understand what ethics is? OK. Mr. Friedman, do you understand ethics? You sit here at every meeting when people are speaking, and you're writing stuff down all the time. Is your job that important? Did we miss something? Everyone else here can sit and listen, paying attention to what everybody here is speaking, but you're writing stuff down. Maybe we're not that important. You can just ignore us. Here's my point. I said a few weeks ago, I stood here and I talked about respect. It's earned, not given. Respect is part of ethics. It's a fundamental ethical value. It's a principle. Respect is an attitude and a behavior. You fail to show. You have made it obvious you are not and have for the residents of this Woodbury, you have no ethics or respect. You do not have our best interest. You have an agenda of your own. You do not have the taxpayers in your best interest. You disrespect the people of this village. If you do not like the way this village is run, if you do not like the way this village board is run, I suggest you resign. The door is right there. Don't let it swing and hit you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Next up, anyone? He's not even that old. He's not even that old. <laughs> He's like 29, guys. Chris Graziano, Highland Mills. I just got a question because I'm asking you guys. I know it's not your purview, but I can't bring myself to go to a town board meeting. So do you have any idea <laughs> of when? On. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. OK. You got to hold it up. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you know when they're going to start working on the, ri um, the bridge by me? Which one? Ridge, Ridge Road. Road. Rob, do you have any? I haven't heard anything from their engineer recently. Um, I know a lot of the paperwork just been completed by the state. So once they have all their paperwork, then they'll go out to bid for all the, the structures and the pre -tasks. All right, I just think, because I knew they said they wanted to start at the end of the spring, and now it's. I was hopeful they were going to start at the end of the spring. <laughs> now it's the summer. Yeah, that's what I was at. All Did right, just from the logistics. the winter months? Probably. Yeah, probably not. Thank you. I just wanted to ask if yeah. anybody knew. Thank you, Mr. Graziano. Anyone else wishing to speak? Going once, going twice, three times. All right. Moving on to department comments. Uh, Kelly, you have anything? As the attorney? Uh, Village Consigliere. I should start playing the Godfather music. Thank you. Hi, Tara Burek, Central Valley. Um, Jimmy, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Um, and thank you, John, for yours and your apology, which I don't need an apology. I have thick skin, so I'm good. But thank you. I No, no, but John did, and, and there's no need. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, so a little bit of clarification about capital and operating budgets. Um, vehicles in any budget typically are not capital expenditures, especially when the village is in the business of highway or fire or anything that uses readily uh, vehicles. Um, the wear and tear of said vehicles are considered operating expenditures, um, in which case it is a discretionary judgment on what, how you classify it as a village. 
So $170,000 really is not, with a budget the size of the village, really is not a feasible capital expenditure. And any uh, municipality our size would also use fund balance, i.e. operating capital, to purchase said vehicles, especially when it, uh, the bonding process takes an extraordinarily long amount of time. And in the interest rate environment, which we're currently operating, um, if anybody's fiscally savvy, you know this is not the time to bond unless it is absolutely necessary. And uh, so that's just an FYI for those in the room who may not understand the difference. Um, the second item I want to bring up is that for I can't tell you how many years, was it going on a decade now, the village has received a fiscal stress score of nothing, negligible, nothing. So thank you, Desiree, and thank you to all uh, village boards for being responsible with their budgets. Um, and what that means is that the state controller of New York does not qualify or, or designate the village as an area of concern with their fiscal responsibility. And that should be noted because the decisions that were made during this current, this last budget cycle, including with the fire truck, um, that was not considered a bondable item because the capital was budgeted for over the years through planning with the fire department chiefs every year with the budgeting cycle. Um, it was um, in, a, in a position where the village could pay cash, and it's the cheaper option in this environment. Um, so I just would like to clarify that because I don't think that anything that was done with the last budget cycle was out of the ordinary for a village business. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you very much. Be safe, happy fourth, and good night. Thank you, Tara. Rob Lyon. I don't have anything to Boo. John Hand. <laughs> yeah, he's got all his desks. You mean two days on the job? Set. You're not caught up? Two no. days? You're not caught up? No. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jessica, anything? Okay. All right. Moving on to board comments, starting at the far end with Trustee Fryban. Thank you. Um, I wanted to sort of follow up the comments on the senior housing. In, I've been a resident for 40 some years here, and I find this project to be probably one of the best development uh, opportunities that the village has seen. The reason I say that is that I was at the Fireman's Inauguration Dinner, and looking at the age of the people there, and the people that are committed to volunteering, it would be nice if they had a place to stay where they can continue to volunteer. So many people have talked about they're moving someplace else. Residents should have a chance when, they, when they've served the village so long, and the village and the town so long, to stay in the village and continue that. This is, this is housing for 55 and over. This gives residents the opportunity to stay here, perhaps with their children in their homes, but at least it's an opportunity. There was some question about whether there was a demand for this. There's right now a waiting list for Monroe, Goshen, and Chester housing, senior citizens housing. This actually offers the village a real resource for people that want to stay here and continue to participate in village life. So I'm very excited and I hope it comes to fruition. I also wanted to give uh, Rob Wyant a shout out. The highway department was out before even the roads were cleared up in our area, already chipping and taking away trees. Incredible job. I don't know how you did it in the entire community because literally it was still stormy up there when they were starting. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Fabro. I'd like to uh, start by thanking you all for being here and coming out. It's, um, it's good to hear from the public, even if I don't love the uh, infighting that happens between the board and the public sometimes. Um, I'd like to encourage you all to please, please remain civil. I know it's hard. I know there's some personal grudges here and campaign season is gearing up, but please, 
for, for my sanity and the rest of the boards. Um, to move on to senior housing, I'd like to say it, it's not a decision I came to lightly. I read every single public comment that was sent in to me. I had discussions with folks in the community. Um, I do feel that it's going to be a decision in the long term that is beneficial. And um, the conservation easement that we're going to work on developing, I think, is versus what the current zoning is with limited commercial is going to be the best course to preserve the most amount of uh, land and trees. And um, everything else we can continue to work on with the planning board, whether it's water, sewer, traffic, those issues can all be, I encourage you all come to the planning board, give them those same concerns. I'm sure that they will take them seriously because I know the people on the planning board are serious individuals. And the same goes with our new building inspector here, John Hand. I'm sure he'll be checking in to make sure any agreement that we formulate with our lawyer will be followed to a T. And um, I'd like to encourage, uh, I'd, sorry. We have, um, is Lisa still here or no? No. no. Left. We have an invasive species seminar, I believe, this Thursday. Yes. I want to say it's uh, at the senior center at 730. And that's for invasive plants, I believe, or is it bugs? Bugs or plants, you guys remember? 6.30. Ooh. Apologies. 6.30, not 7.30. And uh, happy 4th of July to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Fabro. Trustee Suriello. So normally I take the high road and, you know, tone it down. But I just civilly would like to say the following. I'm deeply disturbed with the full statements that Mr. Freiburn made regarding Chris Gerber at our last meeting. And I'd like to give Mr. Freiburn the benefit of the doubt and find out how he verified his facts before making those statements. Specifically, which clerk advised you that Mr. Gerber did not complete all of his training hours? Did you ever attempt to reach out to Mr. Gerber to confirm whether or not he satisfied his requirements? training. Did you ever check with the clerk, whoever that is, if Mr. Cattagio had completed all of his training hours? After all, you endorsed him at the end of April to fill the open seat on the planning board. So I would think that if you were checking on Mr. Gerver, you would have checked on him. And by the way, I did verify with the three clerks in the office that there was no inquiry made. And thinking back to our initial meeting on November 28th that you and Mr. Favreau requested with Vic and myself, you were gunning for Chris Gerver and the planning board back then by attempting to spread false information. You were adamant that the planning board was not following New York State law. You argued that the planning board had 62 days from submission of the application to approve or deny it. I remember saying to you, so you're telling me that our attorney, who's present at every planning board meeting, is allowing our planning board not to follow New York State law? How could that be? And as soon as I got home, I fact-checked you and found that you were wrong. The planning board has 62 days from the close of the public hearing to approve or deny an application, unless both parties agree to extend. I easily concluded that our planning board was complying with the New York State law and chalked it up to you making an honest mistake. I now see that you probably have an agenda for removing Chris Gerver. You had an agenda for removing him even before you were sworn in as Villa's trustee. Your false statements are irresponsible, unethical, and the fact that you did not apologize when your statements were proven wrong clearly shows your lack of character, integrity, and perhaps your motive to purposely spread false information and mislead the residents of Woodbury. It's funny that this is the identical agenda of some of the members of the UJC Vic and I met, back, met with back in January. They too were advocating for Chris Gerber's removal and the appointment of Rich Cattagio as the planning board chair. Is it a coincidence? I'm gonna let the Woodbury, the Woodbury residents decide that for themselves. On a lighter note, <laughs> I would like to congratulate the class of 2024. Tomorrow is the big day, it's graduation. I'm not sure if I'm going to hope for dry weather so the students can have all their family and friends attend the ceremony on the turf field in the heat or hope for 
inclement weather so that they can move inside to the air conditioning but are limited to three guests. But either way, I want to say to them, savor the moment, treasure your family and friends who have gathered to celebrate you, and be proud of all your achievements. And finally, on Thursday at 5 p.m. at Parm, located at the Woodbury Commons, they are hosting a Broadway musical review featuring our own Monroe Woodbury students. The weather is looking fantastic at 80 degrees. You can uh, make reservations online for outside dining. It, if you find that it is full, please just make an inside reservation. They are now trying to put more tables outside because it is selling out. Thank you, everybody. Have a very happy 4th of July. Thank you, Trustee Suriello. Sorry for so long-winded. Deputy Mayor Vic Ferrelli. And Rob, you, told, you had a tough one to follow. <laughs> I can't even, I'm not even going to begin to follow Susan on that. But what I am going to say is um, I'm putting your finishing touches on the uh, Village newsletter. I'm going to get it out tomorrow. And there is going to be some information in there on anybody that's seeking to join the Ethics Committee. So that will be going out. You can look at that, um, see the information. If you have any questions, you can call the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> or me. Um, having said that, I just want to wish everybody a happy and safe 4th of July and a good holiday weekend. And that's it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Forelli. All right. My turn. Um, let me start by thanking the supervisor, Kate Luciani, and the town board. They recently held the em their employee appreciation barbecue, and they were very kind to invo invite the employees of the village of Woodbury. Uh, they did that up at the res last Wednesday, so I want to thank them for that. Uh, as always, I would be remiss if I didn't thank uh, our highway department for this storm. The storm was just fast and quick and came in. So, uh, but I also wanna thank our volunteers of the fire department who were out there. Once again, they're volunteers. So they're leaving and they're going out there during these storms and just checking on us. So, uh, and that includes the, the volunteers of our Woodbury Community Ambulance who have to answer calls in weather like this. So they are better than the post office, both of these departments. Um, working the uh, plan, the work and work the plan. So the one thing I do want to announce and that we're already working on is I have never believed that municipalities should be collecting money for animal shelters. It really should be a separate entity, not it, not associated with the municipality. So the one thing we've already started on is a Friends of the Woodbury Animal Shelter, which used to exist, I think, at some point. Uh, Mike Pistel, our, one of our planning board members, is working on one for Friends of the Library. So I felt it only fitting that we do something similar. So that way money goes in, and then there's a, a committee that will give it out to the shelter itself and the needs of the shelter. So it takes it out of the municipality's hands and puts it into concerned residents. It will not be a village committee in any kind of way. It won't be associated with the municipality, but it will exist on its own. Um, the senior housing, I will just say this. I was always in favor of this project from the get-go. I think my concern was the amount of residents that came out in opposition to it. Um, I think it ultimately, the 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 arguments that we heard on both sides of the fence, and I took all of that into consideration before voting on it tonight, we will keep on top of it. I know the residents' concerns with this project, but it will now go on to the planning board. And from there, it'll be our building department's job and, and so forth to make sure that your concerns are considered and that we're on top of that. So that is my pledge to the residents of Woodbury. Um, I want to echo uh, Trustee Suriello's comments about our graduates from Monroe Woodbury and Cornwall Central School District. You know, they're both, they're done. And so a lot of these kids are moving on to the next chapter of their lives. So if you could look back on your time moving off to college and that last summer of freedom before the, the scariness of college begins, 
So I just want to wish them all the best as they move forward. And then also piggyback, piggybacking what uh, Trustee Suriello said. So uh, Trustee Fabro, I understand your concerns and I do appreciate them. But when you lie to discredit somebody, then it calls for an action. And it will be stated over and over again because Chris Gerver was completely certified, okay? His, his certification I had within my hands within 10 minutes of leaving this building. So where that information came from, I think is complete fabrication. And it's that type of behavior that should not exist here in Woodbury or anywhere, okay? Trying to discredit somebody who does more for this community than most people do is disgraceful. And I will not bend on that one. So there's not, there's not much I can say. I, I made, a, I made a, a choice to call Chris and make sure he understood that the bulk of the board had his back and that this was the actions of one man who, as Trustee Suriello said, has had a I don't know, a target on his back for months on end, because this is the same garbage that I dealt with last year during the election cycle about the removal of Chris Gerver. So that's not happening. He happens to be the best Doshkon planning board chair in Orange County, and I will fight that to the death. So that's all I got to say tonight. Any case. With no further business to discuss or comments received, can I motion a second to adjourn this meeting? Motion. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Our next meeting is scheduled for June 11th. Until then, remember, July 11th, I'll get it. Chuck Norris does not sleep, he waits. I'm gonna just keep doing that.